Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here at the O2 Intercontinental. Thankfully, it's the start of fight week. Dempsey McKean, how are you? I'm good, mate. Better, better now that we've got some good news and everything's been re-locked in and uh, just got to look forward to uh, Saturday night. Yeah, talk to me through those kind of 48 hours, Saturday morning slash midday. We get, all get the news, the gutting news about Dillian White and the show's in jeopardy. No one's heard about anything. W- were you worried? I didn't even know at first. I was just sitting there and uh, watching a bit of TV and my phone just started blowing up and I had people trying to call me and message me and... I mean, but Connor Benz just sent me a message. He's like, it's okay, bro, keep your head up. Everything's positive. I'm thinking, oh, shit, what's going on here? So I've gone on to Instagram and had to scroll through and I've seen all the news and uh, been worried and I re- must have misread it at first, thinking the whole card had been scrapped, but it was just the fight itself. And, um, but, you know, matrim, doing matrim things and lucky enough they get a replacement fighter in late notice and the, the show still goes ahead and all us undercard fighters still get to fight and, and uh, make some money. Yeah, we know last October the show didn't end up going ahead with Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. Just how relieved were you when you got the call to say, look, it's fine, we've found a replacement and you'll still be fighting the biggest fight of your career on Saturday night? Yeah, so no, uh, obviously obviously with the news of the Conor Ben's card, uh, that was the last thing they wanted was to have the whole card pretty much scrapped and obviously they couldn't have that, so they've you know jumped leaps and bounds and probably not going to be the most financial... Uh, you know, option for them, but, you know, they've come through and, and given us guys a platform to fight on, lucky enough, and uh, obviously we'd, the last thing we want is another postponement for our fight, you know, I was, I was scheduled to fight in May, then June, July, and then it was pushed back to August, so glad to still get to fight, and it's not another postponement, and uh, back into training camp again, so. We know you're a Southpaw, but the thought never come across your mind that you might get the call from Anthony Joshua to, say, step in there on Saturday night? Uh, kind of passed my mind slightly as well but you know I'm in contract to fight Hergovic and yeah the whole Southpaw thing none of these top guys really want to fight Southpaw as you know as it is especially when you've done a whole camp for an orthodox so no I wasn't wasn't really too worried at all so if something had been sorted contractually and they wanted it would you have stepped in with Joshua I don't know some uh, myself and the team would have to sit down and uh, talk about but you know obviously a a win over Hergovic puts me and propels me into bigger fights and you know so my eyes are all on Hergovic at the moment yeah, let's talk about Philip. Obviously, it is the biggest fight of your career. It's a chance for you to get that world title opportunity in those IBF rankings. We spoke before about big fights. This is what you wanted, isn't it? Definitely. This is what we're, we're in the game for, to get those big fights. You know, I've done the hard yards and I've built my career up and my record up and you know, got myself into two governing bodies, the IBF and the WBO, with a, with a good team behind me in ace boxing. And you know, we're finally here and we've been chasing a big fight for quite some time and every time it's just slipped through the fingertips, you know, we were in talks with AJ and then Dillian White was even so close as well and Tyson Fury recently also and uh, every one of those kind of managed to slip through. So, but we're here now, Herkovic is signed and, you know, just a few days out. Just quickly on Tyson Fury, were you disappointed when that fight couldn't be made and then he ended up going to fight Francis Ngannou? It is what it is, I guess. It's like, take everything with Tyson Fury as a pinch of salt, you know. Like, you know, there was talks about it, but you know, coming into fruition, I don't think it was a good chance of ever happening. And it's a shame that he's gone the route that he has. Obviously, uh, a current, you know, world champion taking these kind of fights, it is quite sad and slows up the division. But you know, I just got to focus on myself and, and what's it, a task for myself. Back to Hergovic, probably the toughest opponent in your professional career. Um, just how good do you believe he is? Yeah, look, he's good. He's, he's had a good amateur pedigree and stuff, and he's had some, you know, some good fights. Um, you know, but I think we've got a similar record in, in opposition that we're for. Obviously, he's got the, the breakthrough fight with Zhang, which he, you know, which is, uh, you know, did he win that fight or did he not? So, so um, yeah, look, he's he's, he's a good fighter. One hundred percent, he's a good fighter, and a win over here is going to put me into uh, like a fight with Usyk or, or Dubois. So, you know, I just feel I'm better. How confident are you that you do take him apart on Saturday night? Very confident. I've got the skills to do. I've got the footwork, the head movement, the hand speed, you know, the, the punch combination. I've got all the tools. I've got the power, everything. You know, I'm not a one-trick pony. I'm, I'm quite blessed in all departments and I'm willing to showcase that. Is this the fight before your world title fight? 
this is the fight before my world title fight, 100%. And we know that will put you in line for the IBF. Current holder is Alexander Usyk. He's fighting Daniel Dubois. But dimension-wise, if Usyk were to get through that, you to get through Hergovic, Southpaw v Southpaw, could be some blockbuster, couldn't it? Definitely, mate. And I think that would uh, definitely fall in Saudi Arabia. Obviously, he's, he's just recently signed with them. So, massive fight out that way. And I'm, I'm sure it's going to be mega proportion out there as well. And um, looking forward to that. But obviously, all eyes on Herkovic come Saturday. Definitely. I'm sure we'll catch up again during the week. But thank you very much for speaking to IFL TV. Uh, just before we finish up, I think you've really embraced the Essex lifestyle. You've got an Arnie <laughs> top on, yeah. mallets on. Yeah. God, you look like you come straight out of the sugar up, mate. Right, I've been here two years, you know, so maybe <laughs> it has slightly rubbed off me a bit, but I'll be uh, dying to get back home to the Gold Coast in, a, in about a month's time anyway, that's for sure. And hopefully I can rub that back off for me when I jump into the ocean. So, <laughs> <laughs> Dempsey, thank you very much for speaking right, to me this afternoon and best of luck on Saturday night, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2. Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking shell up.